Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be back with you again this week, uh, Musical Monday's week number four, um, to talk about some lesson plans, uh, to talk through some um, concert plans. Uh, and so the the, uh, the plan tonight is to talk about all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons that I'm doing this week, just a quick um, brush through rundown, um, and then do a more detailed description of what I'm doing with my kindergartners um, in our, our lessons this week, and then also talk a little bit about uh, preparations for my third grade family folk dance night that's coming up um, in a little over a month assuming <laughs> all things go to uh go uh, to plan and we're able to have our folk dance night with the public who knows <laughs> but that's our plan okay so uh, a couple of quick things if you hear me talk about a book or a puppet or a, a game or something that you're very interested in um and you're like where can i find that there's a whole page on my blog uh dedicated dedicated to the links that i talk about in these videos so if you go to um well, at the bottom of wherever you're listening, if there's a caption or, or a description at the bottom of that, there should be a direct link. If you can't find that, um, you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, and you can click the video tab, and under that drop down, there should be a uh, Musical Mondays recap for, for the 2022-2023 school year. Or 20, what year is this? I don't know. It's been a long day, long year. 2021-2022 school year. <laughs> Wow, this is a great start. Um, okay, also, um, if you want to continue this conversation after the video is over, feel free to always leave a comment or um, a question or whatever, wherever it is you're watching, listening, um, and I'll try and catch that and comment back. Uh, if you don't have a chance to do that, you can always email me. My email is makemomentsmatter.gmail.com or um, join the Facebook group. It's um, Every Moment Matters, music education community. Ask questions, make friends, um, get ideas, share ideas. It's a great place to... Um, do more together. Okay, let's jump in. So my plan, um, and I haven't been able to do this the last couple weeks because I've tried something a little bit different, but my plan this week is to just a quick rundown of everything kindergarten through fifth grade and then do a more intense breakdown of what my um, kindergartners are doing and then share just a little bit about that with you and um, go from there. Okay, so, cool. Um, I was like, where's my school laptop? Not here, cool. So <laughs> I may have to improvise a little bit, but um, let me just run through my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons that are probably gonna be interrupted because here's hoping we'll have a snow day this week. But anyway, um, these are the plans. So my kindergartners are coming in and, well, I'm gonna skip this one because we're gonna do it. We're gonna get, jump into this a little bit more later. So I'm gonna just skip that. My first graders are planning, um, we're preparing on a sort of a long cycle for a concert that's happening in April. And um, even though that's happening much, much later, I'm introducing a lot of the songs now because I don't want it to just be like just straight program prep. So instead, um, I'm introducing songs in lessons. And so they're getting them sort of in and out um, in the next couple months. And then when it becomes time, like the, the couple weeks leading up to the program, we'll just pull out the songs that they already know. We'll shine them up a little bit, change them a little bit, and then they'll be ready for a concert. So. The first grade concert is like going to the zoo basically is the theme. Um, and so we've been done a lot of like animal songs and traveling songs and um, exploration, things like that. So uh, what we're doing in this lesson, we start out with this song called Going to the Jungle, which is from a Lynn Kleiner book. If you don't know Lynn Kleiner, go check her out. Um, you can find all of her resources and all of her ideas at musicrhapsody.com. Um, but she also has these really great books um, I'm going to reference two tonight. There's one called Jungle Beat, which is where this song comes from. And then the other one called SOS, Songs of the Sea. Um, I'm going to talk about both of those today. But um, the one that this song comes from, Going to the Jungle Today, is from Jungle Beat. It's just sort of this sort of silly little song. Um, oh, we're going to the jungle today. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to the jungle today. Oh, yeah. Keep the beat in your feet. We're in for a treat in the jungle today. Oh, yeah. Here we go in the jungle today. Oh yeah, here we go 
in the jungle today. So it's this cute little zippy little song. Um, and then it has um, verses that are spoken. The snakes in the trees are hidden away. The monkeys are out because they want to play. The birds are flapping. Let's play too. They make this noise. Coo, 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 coo. And I've gotten good enough um, on the ukulele to be able to play it on the ukulele. Let's see this one. Yeah. And then I, because I'm playing on ukulele, we had to modify it. We're in for a treat in the jungle today. In the jungle today. In the jungle today. And then for the B section, the spoken part, I'm actually going to play. I have a djembe that I'm going to I'm going to do as an accompaniment while the kids speak the part. It's just a cute little song. Um, we're gonna. It's going to be part of a larger thing about going to the zoo, um, and we're going to talk about the animals that you could find in like a jungle section or a rainforest section or whatever of the zoo, um, and talk about some of those animals. So that's what we start out with today. We've actually been learning it the last couple of weeks, but we've just building in. So like each week, we'll add like another verse or another element. And what are the kids doing? Well, they're doing sort of like a walk around. They're they're like looking at each other and they're doing like a walk to the steady beat as we do it. Um, and it's also so cute because it's like contrasting like the singing, the sung part, they're walking and then the spoken part, they stop and they freeze and we do some action. So it's just a, a fun little song that sort of fits in with the program theme. Um, let me do a song that I've known forever, sort of a camp song, honestly, I think called Matilda the Gorilla. Um, I had a pet gorilla. <laughs> Her name, it was a Matilda. Matilda liked to sing songs every day. And this is what Matilda the gorilla would say. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. So there are at least four little verses to that. Um, and Matilda, like, it's so funny because when we introduce it, we talk about could you have, what kind of pets can you have, blah, blah, blah. You could have a fish or a, a, a dog or a cat. Those are all you, like, you know, normal everyday pets. Um, if you had a snake for a pet, you could, but it'd be a little unusual. Um, if you had, you know, a tarantula for a pet, you could. It's a little bit more unusual. Could you have a whale for a pet? No. Right? Could you have mm, a bumblebee for a pet? Probably not. Right. And so then we talk about a gorilla. Would that be normal or unusual? And then that's sort of our preface leading into or leading into this song. Um, and then the song talks about having Matilda as a pet. Um, the first verse is about having her as a pet. The second one is like, oh, we go walking through the park and people think we're crazy, but I love Matilda. And then the third one, um, in the original one, it goes, um, one day the circus man came along. But I obviously just changed that to one day the zookeeper came along. He said, Matilda, I know where you belong. And then so anyway, she goes and she joins the zoo and she's so happy. So the kids each week, like the first week we experienced it and they obviously learned the chorus. Oh, ooh, 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 ah, 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 right. And then the second week, you know, maybe I'll teach them a couple of the verses. And then as we go, we learn a little bit more as we go. Um, then my students, we, a couple weeks ago, we learned a song, um, hunt the cattle, wake up, you sleepy heads and go and find the cattle, wake up, you sleepy heads and go and find the cows. The cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till we come or till they come home. Now I'll go to sleep. And the, the person who's supposed to be watching the cattle, obviously is not doing their job and so instead the cows get out and they get lost and then um the whole the whole idea is like this back and forth between me the dad character who's like wake up you're supposed to be taking care of the cattle and then the kids who are like oh it's fine i'm just gonna nap right so there's like this whole back and forth it's fun because it, like i get to split the job with the kids and like i sing some and they sing some i have actions they have actions that's when we learned weeks ago we compare that to what we learned today, which is um, Little Bo Peep. So we talk about the poem. We talk about what it's like um, in Go and Hunt the Cattle. The cows are not coming home on their own. 
Um, I think I'll wait till they come home, but will they ever come home? Who knows? And then little Bo Peep finds out that the sheep do come back on their own. Um, and so it's just this sort of fun comparison. Um, also, this is a poem. The other one is a song. And so we sort of compare and contrast. But again, it's sort of a, a, this fun story. How will this fit into the the zoo program? Well, um, little Bo Peep is our newest zookeeper. And uh, first it's has lost the sheep and then we're going to lose other animals that the kids choose so maybe they choose peacocks or maybe they choose whatever i don't know um and we're going to let each homeroom sort of choose and then we'll add that into the poem and change the actions based on what they decide so little bo peep has lost the dolphins and doesn't know where to find them leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them it'll be really funny if they choose an animal without a tail but um we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we come to it and then if we have time, we'll play with popsicle sticks and do stick notation versions of quarter notes, uh, eighth notes, and quarter rest, because that's sort of the, the rhythmic notation we're currently on. Uh, in the next lesson for first grade, we revisit Go and Hunt the Cattle. Um, then we compare that right away with Little Bo Peep. And then we sort of introduce that idea of like, well, what if it were another animal? Or um, uh, the first time I teach Little Bo Peep, because um, the kids sort of know it. Um, they don't always know the ending. They know Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. They don't always know, leave them alone and they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. So what I sometimes do is um, the part of Little Bo Peep, Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Freak out, freak out, run and go find them. They must get the sheep home tonight. You know, like that's like Little Bo Peep. <clears throat> and so then there's this wise old character that's, oh, no, 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 leave them alone and they'll come home. So when we bring the story back like another day, I'm like, oh, Little Bo Peep, let's try it. I'll do the freak out part. And the kids are like, ha, 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 no, that's not right. So, you know, like I'll be like, you know, the first time before I even introduce that freak out moment, I'll just pretend like we're going to do it normal. And then I'll do Little Bo Peep. And, and they think that's so silly that I've changed the story. Ha ha, Mr. Rao, that's not how we know it. And so then they'll, they'll get to correct me. And that helps sort of cement in the actual version of the song. And they think it's fun. And um, so it's just another way to sort of uh, change the lesson up a little bit. So they get the repetition, but it doesn't feel exactly the way that we did it before. And then um, we'll do a uh, recap of the note neighborhood. We've already done quarter note, quarter rest, uh, and eighth note, um, beamed eighth notes. And so we'll, there's a, every time I do a note neighborhood set, every time I create one, I always have like an introduction PowerPoint and a practice PowerPoint. So the introduction is like introducing the note value, giving explanations of how it works. But then also along with each one, there's like another story in the neighborhood where they get a, just like another chance to practice that concept. So the practice for the quarter rest is they're going to go down to the park to feed the ducks and the sassy neighbor comes by and so they want to hide from her so they hide up in this tree and then what's really fun about this one is I was able to work in um, notes that are upside that are inverted basically so like notes with stems down instead of just stems up I feel like our elementary kids see stem up notes like all the time and they don't always see stem down notes and they think it's either wrong or um, a problem or there's something weird. Um, and so I, I like being able to use this one to sort of show them that and, uh, show them like what, you know, oh, it's, the, it's Ta, it's just, he's hanging upside down on the tree branch or whatever. Um, and so that's in, that's the, in the quarter rest note neighborhood file, that's like one of the things that's included is like, there's the introduction and this is the practice one going to the, um, going to the park. Cool. That's first grade. Um, I see Rebecca said, can we see the PowerPoint? I'm not planning on showing, if we have time at the end for sure, but I wanna make sure we get through all this other stuff first. So I'm gonna zoom through if I can. But it's in the Note Neighborhood resources and it's the quarter rest is the one that, that one comes from. Okay, second grade is also planning for a program. This one is like end of um, March, no, middle of April, it's coming up. But again, it's that same idea of, I don't wanna just like, you know, hit them with like, programs coming, programs coming, like just do songs. So it's like, as we're going through the semester, I'm introducing more of these songs. I'm even pulling songs that we were doing in the fall. Um, and so introducing all these things sort of along the theme. And then when the concert comes around, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll sort of pull it all together and pull all the threads together. And they'll be like, oh yeah, that was that, you know, so it's going to sort of all come together. So the second grade um, is an ocean theme. It's going to be based around the book Commotion in the Ocean. Um, 
by Giles Andre. And so that's what it's going to be about. So we're doing a lot of like ocean songs, water songs, animals from the ocean songs, that sort of thing. Um, so in the last couple weeks, we've been doing some of those. Um, but what we do this week is we do a continuation of the song, Eyes the Bye that uh, built the boat. So Eyes the Bye that, let's see. Eyes the Bye that built the boat. Eyes the Bye that sails her. Eyes the Bye that catches the fish and sink. Brings them home to lies. So there's this, it's a fun song from Newfoundland. Um, and uh, if I said anything wrong, please correct me, Newfoundlanders who are listening. Um, but it's um, a, just a fun sort of traditional folk song from Newfoundland, Canada. And so it's a fun one to introduce. And there are a couple different verses we could do. There's also like a little dance that I found online that we might try a little bit. And we could also just modify, do our own sort of movements and things that we wanted um, it's fun to show parents, you know, some of the dance, the folk dance elements that we've learned and just sort of add it into the song. So this song is one that we're continuing to work on. Um, but it's, it's a fun one because when I introduce the song, I always try and pull up like a map, show them where it is because my second graders, I don't know about your second graders, my second graders don't always know the differences between cities, states, countries, continents, hemisphere, you know, like they're, they're still learning all those differentiations. So when we talk about this song, I talk about where it comes from and we talk about how it's sort of like, you know, a province in Canada is sort of like a state, you know, it's like a breakdown of the country, a smaller unit in the country, but it's not a city and it's bigger than that. So having that fun connection is really sort of cool to be able to talk about. Um, and then also to talk about Newfoundland and to, uh, to bring some of that history in is sort of cool too. In the last lesson, I know I talked about this, I think two weeks ago, uh, we talked about, I talked about the book Dim Sum for Everyone and how I'm, I'm coordinating that with like a rhythm lesson. So I know I've already talked about that, but um, each time they come back, like the first time I introduced the book Dim Sum for Everyone, I found a video from the Food Network that's like a three minute video about what a dim sum restaurant is like and what to expect if you were to go. So that's really cool for kids who've never been to a restaurant like that to sort of show them like what kind of food they could get, what the service is like, because the part of the dim sum restaurant is the service of people coming out on, around with carts that have food on them and the way you're served and what you get. Um, and so the, that video from Food Network is really cool. I also found a video call, um, called like Kids Try Dim Sum. And so that, that's the one that, that factors into this lesson of these really cute kids trying dim sum for the first time. So part of the reaction is um, what they're eating. Part of the reaction is like the process of how they're eating. And so it's it's really cute to be able to show that to my kids. Because again, when sometimes when the kids, when they see dim, the dim sum, the first dim sum video, they're like, I don't know if I'd like any of that food. And then when I show them a video of other kids eating the food and the kid's reaction is like super positive, then they're like, yeah, I think maybe I... Maybe I could eat that. So it's fun to be able to show them that. That happens all in this first lesson. And then we, um, then I, I, I know I talked a couple weeks ago about how the dim sum lesson works. So I'm not going to go into all of that. If you'd like to see that, check a couple weeks ago. Um, it's a rhythm-based lesson based around this idea of dim sum and how you put together different elements of food. And, and, and what we do is we build rhythms based on those food foods and the rhythms in those food words. In the second week of the, um, in the second half of the week, um, we we do eyes the by again. Um, we add a little bit of movement, and then what the time we have, we've already done a song from Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS Songs of the Sea. I know I shared about this a couple weeks ago. We did it with scars. We did it with a stretchy band. Um, and so, what we're gonna do in this lesson is we're going to take, I have this cool thing called an octaband and it has like 16 long stretchy arms connected to like a centerpiece. Um, and so we're going to sort of take the waves and, and figure out a movement that we can do with this. Um, 16 is not enough for my whole class. I also have a bunch of these, like, they're sort of like pantyhose. <laughs> they're like this stretchy material that's not very long. Um, the octoband, what's cool is it's like long pieces of stretchy material all connected in the middle um, where kids can, it's sort of like a parachute shape, only it's cut up and it's, I wish I had a picture to show you, um, but it does sort of look like a spider or an octopus or something. Um, and, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the song, The Waves, with this sort of fun, connectable piece. But then the kids who don't all have like an arm, because there are only 16 of these like arms, they're going to get these stretchable things that will also incorporate and, and add in with a little bit of movement. So again, it's taking this song we already know, adding another layer to it. Because for the concert, um, when we do this song, 
to make it really exciting because I have four homerooms in second grade to to do this concert. Um, one of the homerooms will get a parachute. Maybe two will get a parachute. One will get a stretchy band. One will get the octaband. And then they'll all, it, at the same time, they'll get to do the different things that you might do um, during the song, the things we've tried it in class. Each one is going to demonstrate a different thing. And I, I hope that it ends up looking really cool. Um, I hope that we have good weather because I have to do the concert outside. So I'm hoping the parachute doesn't blow away. I'm going to have a contingency plan. I don't yet, but I'm going to have a contingency plan for if and when we have to do this. But um, this is the day where we get to explore the song. We already know the waves from Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS Songs of the Sea, and then see how we can do it a little bit differently with this octoband. How would that dynamic change the the song? How's it going to work? So that's, that's sort of what we get to do um, on this day. My third graders, I'm going to come back to um, because we're talking about um, folk dance. They're they're prepping for a folk dance concert night, so I'm going to come back to that because I want to talk a little bit about more about folk dance and how I put that together and then how I'm pacing it out in my lessons. Fourth grade, we're doing a nursery rhyme of the day. I talked about that several weeks ago. Um, since I think I last talked about that, we've added Little Miss Muffet. We've added Cobbler, Cobbler, Mend My Shoe. This week we had Hickory Dickory Dock and Diddle Diddle Dumpling My Son John. So <clears throat> those are nursery rhymes that we're adding in because um, we're going to have a cumulative activity with a bunch of nursery rhymes later. One of the things that I'm doing with the nursery rhymes uh, to try and get them to understand that feeling of like duple or triple. Um, I've, I've not done this before, but I was like, okay, let's talk about the song. You know, the first poem or whatever. The first poem we ever did was Humpty Dumpty Sat on a Wall. I mean, the first poem we had, not we ever did, but like this in this like little mini unit was Humpty Dumpty Sat on the Wall. So I said, you know, when you do Humpty Dumpty Sat on the Wall, you, know, you go like Humpty Dumpty Sat on a Wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And I do this sort of action of like rocking back and forth. I even sometimes put out my arms to demonstrate, to show it even more. Because if you're just rocking your head back and forth, sometimes they don't see it as much as if you like, you know, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. and I say, you know, it sort of feels wobbly, doesn't it? Hum. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. It doesn't feel like you're marching. It's not Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Uh, that's not sort of how you do it. You do it is more wobbly, isn't it? That feels more relaxed, more natural. Hmm, interesting. So, and then the next time we learn a new nursery rhyme, we learn it. We talk about it. Um, I always try and give cultural context. So, like for. Um, Cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoes are a great example. We talk about what a cobbler is, what a cobbler a cobbler does. Um, they may know the word cobbler, like the dessert, but not as like the, the job. So we talk about using context clues from the poem to like, what does a cobbler do? Because every time I do a nursery rhyme, I want to make sure they understand actually what the vocabulary and context means. So I always uh, talk about that. But once we've done talking about that and I've learned the poem and I've sort of done it two or three times, sort of internalized it, I ask them that question of like, does it feel more wobbly or does it feel more like a march? I actually say, does it feel marchy? <laughs> does it feel wobbly or does it feel marchy? What do you think? And so we'll say it, and then sometimes we'll say it both ways. So, cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe. Get it done by half past two. Does that feel as good or does it? Cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe. Get it done by half past two. And I always, we do the actions with it to sort of reinforce that that idea of what the, the um, the meter the feel might be and it's fun to sort of differentiate so they understand like that difference between the feeling of um the bum 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 ba dum bum bum from order of a duple as opposed to a dum dum da dum da 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 and sometimes there are some poems that could maybe be both like jack and jill is one that could maybe be do jack and jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water the problem comes when you get to tumbling Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. That tumbling. That Jill came tumbling after. You know, so we we talk about the that is it marchy, is it wobbly? Because then hopefully that's gonna help them identify like how the poem goes. And then also we'll when we when we play some of these rhythms later, hopefully it'll make their rhythms more accurate and more realistic. Okay, so we've um actually uh we start out with a nursery rhyme, maybe five minutes, and then we jump into um, we jump into a, a, a performance piece from um, Volume One of Music for Children. So if you've taken an ORF course um, or you've done ORF Schulwerk 
workshops or anything and you've seen one of these yellow books sometimes they're more brown sometimes they're something else um it's a great book if you know how to use it and if you don't know how to use it come do an or work level um it's totally worth your time um but there's a, a a song in here that we are learning and i'm trying to see which one exactly it is it is page 109 number 27 tranquillo um and it's one that we're just learning sort of the, the parts as we go. And in this week, we learned there are two melodic ostinati. And so we learned those. In the next week, we'll learn how to play the melody. Um, and then we'll sort of put it all together um, with another little piece coming up. But this is a great, great, great book to have. If you've never done an ORF class or an ORF level, I honestly don't recommend buying it. <laughs> it's, it's great if you know how to use it. And the, you will know how to use it if you take a class. And so it's it's sort of, I remember buying it the first time before I did an ORF class, and I remember looking at it being like, I don't know, you know, because it doesn't have a lot of great instructions like right there, um, the way that like a, a modern textbook would. I mean, it's a textbook from, you know, like 50 years ago. <laughs> so um, you should go to an ORF class and then get that book. But if you already have um, the book, um, check it out. It's a it's a fun um, the, if you or if you've done an ORF level the one that we're doing is like I said I think it's page uh, 109 number 27 tranquillo yeah okay that's fourth grade uh, fifth grade we're also doing a poem or sorry a song from um, the volumes the one I just talked about um, we're pairing it with this book I sang you down from the stars by Tasha Spillett Summer, uh, Sumner, uh, illustrated by Michaela Goad. It's a really, really beautiful book um, talking about um, an indigenous woman from Canada who is um, finds out she's pregnant. And uh, basically the whole book is like her preparing a medicine bundle for her child um, and just preparing to have a baby. And so this whole book is all about that and um, really beautiful, Like, but also not just like the words are beautiful, but the illustrations are beautiful. Um, Michaela Goad, who did the illustrations, won a Caldecott Award for um, another book that she illustrated, um, We Are Water Protectors. That's the one that she won the Caldecott Award for. But this one has just really, really gorgeous photos. Um, so one of the things about my fifth grade um, is that we have, like we've gotten really good at fun, more upbeat songs, but we're not so good at always being serious and being artful and being um, thoughtful. And part of that is because they're fifth graders in the second half of the school year. So like that's tricky um, just because of their dynamic. Um, and so I, I always try and think about like, you know what, they're being turds today yeah okay there <laughs> it's the second half of fifth grade fine you know but um also i always try and push them to be more artistic and to be more uh, expressive and to be more um great human beings because <laughs> fifth graders are not always um fifth grade is the highest grade at my school so they're like oh we're too cool we're going to middle school next year sure anyway so <laughs> So uh, this book is really great because um, it is a more serious topic, but also then uh, when we get into the song that goes with it, we can talk about a lullaby, we can make connections, we can talk about like how we should uh, express this one because of the connections we're making in the story. Now, this book um, is not... The song that goes with this is just a pairing that I made, but I bought the book years ago because I was like, this is this beautiful book. I really want to use it. I don't know exactly where, but I'm going to find out a way because I want more indigenous representation in my classroom. And so this is a great way to do that. Um, but also like the illustrations are gorgeous. I'm sure I can make a connection. So I bought the book um, and this is um, one of the lessons that I'm using it for. So the song that we're doing is another tranquillo, actually. Um, and this is one, um, let me see if I can find it. It's also from volume one, Music for Children. Uh, but this one, let me see if I can find it. Um, this one is from a page 106, number 20. Um, it's a different, uh, there are several different tranquillos in, um, in the volumes, but this is the one that I'm doing with my fifth graders it's slower the thing that's fun about it though is that like even though it's slow the the instrumental parts are pretty tricky 
Um, I've done it in the past where there's a recorder part where we play recorder, um, but we're not playing wind instruments in music class this year. So like recorders. So that's not a recorder part, but we're going to play it either on xylophone or sing. I've added some words that go with like the main melody line um, that are just sort of about a baby and about um, preparing for that sort of based on some of the words from the, the book. Um, but anyway, it's all going to go together. The, the really fun part though, is the alto xylophone part. The accompaniment part is very tricky. Um, it's very tricky rhythmically. There's some dexterity things that are going on, some back and forths. Um, some sort of syncopation that like is tricky for kids. So even though, um, you know, at the end of day one of doing this song, I say, okay, on a, on a, on a scale of one to 10, one being I'm super confident and 10 being, whoa, where are you? And most of the kids are like, whoa, you know, like, because it's, it's very tricky. So it's fun that like we can use this beautiful book um, with these gorgeous illustrations, with the great subject matter, and do a lullaby, but it still be rhythmically interesting and exciting for the kids. So I really love that. Um, like I said, that's page 106, I think is what I said. And it's it's one that's very familiar to a lot of Orphe, Orphe people. Ba, da, 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 da. Ba, da, 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 da. So if you're if you're familiar with that, um, it's um, that's the song that we're we're pairing with this book. Super 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 fun um, connection. Love this book. You should go get it. There's a link on the links page if you want to go think about it or just look at more pictures from inside. It's worth it. Okay. Let's jump into kindergarten lessons, and then um, I'm going to try and make sure we have time to talk about Family Folk Dance Night, which is what my third graders are, are gearing up for, and to talk about some of the songs I've chosen, and then like how I'm um, putting that into my lessons, into the, the um, scaffolding of, of um, the unit. Okay, so my kindergartners, when we come in, um, they always do come and make a circle, 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 come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we meet a circle, then we'll all sit down. So they come in and then um, we did a song in the previous lesson, but we sort of bring it back just as another chance for kids to try it out, but also to reinforce what happens in the song. So the last time they just experienced it and they did it, and this time we get to talk about it and label it a little bit more. So to introduce this song, I always bring out my fun um, finger puppet friend, um, Larry. Larry, can you wave to the kids? Sorry, do you want to do a bigger wave than that? No, Larry's a little nervous. Larry gets nervous. Um, I don't know if you can notice, but Larry is a lobster. And lobsters have... Oh, here, I'm going to cover his ears. Lobsters have a lot of predators, like big fish or sharks or us people. People like to eat lobsters. Anyway, uh, so I, I have that fun conversation with kids about why a lobster might be nervous. But when we talk about different parts of a lobster, it's got its shell, it's got its little tail, it's got legs, it's got these little sort of whiskery antenna things. Um, and then the thing that a lobster is most proud of are what? Yeah, it's claws. It's very proud of its claws. Um, and Larry, are you proud of your claws? Yeah, they're pretty nice claws. And, and then watch what Larry can do with his claws. Here, here watch this. So what Larry is doing is just patting with both hands at the same time, patting a steady beat. And I say, kids, can you do that too on your on your knees with your claws? I mean, uh, with your hands, because kids don't have claws. Can you do? Can you pat the steady beat with Larry? Watch him. Steady beat, steady beat, steady beat. Try it. Ready? Here you go. And dun, dun, dun. so they try that. And then I say, Larry, did you did you, wait what? Sorry, Larry's just nervous. He did, he he's. I bet he is going to be great friends with all of you, but he's just a little nervous, so he's just talking to just me. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Well, so watch this. Larry um, is going to show what he can do now. So first he did hands together. He did a steady beat there, right? But now watch this. Now he's using his claws, and he's doing alternating movements or separate hands where it's left, right, left, right, left, right, one, then the other, one, then the other. And can you do a steady beat like that? And the kids try, right? And they do their thing. And um, it's this finger puppet is just perfect for this. Um, it's not a folk manas puppet. I know, surprise. Um, I can't remember what brand it is, but I know I put it on the links page. Um, 
I know it's there. Um, but it's it's great because you can put your, your two fingers in Larry's claws. So it's really easy to do alternating movements with the two claws because you just use your index finger and your, your middle finger. And you could, it's really easy to manipulate the puppet. So it's really fun to be able to do steady beat hands together, steady beat hands separate. Um, and then for the song, there's a song from Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS, Songs of the Sea, which I already talked about once tonight. Um, but it's, there's a song called Larry the Lobster. And it goes, Larry the Lobster, Larry the Lobster, kicking in the sand all day. Oh, what a guy. Larry the Lobster, Larry the Lobster, swimming along his way. And there's this really great recording of kids singing with a, a xylophone accompaniment part. In the, in the book with its additional CD. So super cool little little song. That's just the first part. But on that part, I have kids do a steady beat on their knees with, uh, with Larry. And the first time we do, Larry the lobster, Larry the lobster, beat, beat, beat. So pretty slow. Um, the, the thing is that this song repeats. There's like, there are like three parts. This first part is part A, which is just the singing part where Larry is relaxed, right? And then part B goes, look out, Larry, here comes a fish, here comes a fish, which is sort of out of time. And then it goes, run, run, Larry, run, hide in the water, run, run, Larry, run, run for your life. It's this, this very quick part. And so Larry, instead of going a nice steady beat, will go and run as fast as he can to run away. And so then the kids on their own knees going, you know, running as fast as quickly as they can. So um, it's just, it's a fun, cute little song. Uh, it happens two or three different times. He, Larry walks four times, but then there are three predators you have to run from. There's a big fish, there's a shark, and then there's a net from people trying to eat lobster. So anyway, um, so what we do the first two times, because Larry walks four times, the first two times you steady, steady, slow, slow slow and then the set the last two times we started to do double time so steady steady walking walking uh, larry the lobster larry the lobster and so kids are then they're just sitting crisscross padding on their knees they love it and we talk about so the first time we just experienced it in the last lesson we just experienced it in this lesson we talk about the different parts so in one part larry is walking and is relaxed and is having a great time and then after the predator shows up what happens he's not walking he's running and he's not relaxed he's nervous or scared or excited i don't know and then he's not um slow he's fast you know we talk about the differences between the two scenarios the dif differences between the two parts of the story um and larry experiences that we get experience it with him and so um that's just a fun thing we we talk about the different they're singing and then there's like the the sort of speaking shouting part look out larry or you can even do a whisper voice so you can have di different different aspects for different parts of the song look out larry you could do a whisper voice there but it's a super cute song. This puppet is like absolutely perfect to go with it. Um, but the book is great. I have so many gems in there. Uh, the book, the song I talked about earlier with second grade, The Waves is in there. I use Larry the Lobster. There are like three or four other songs that are like yearly favorites and then some other seasonal ones that come out too. So check it out. Totally worth it. Um, then... The kids go back to their special seating, sparks, seating chart spots and out comes Tabby. Um, and this is sort of the conversation I have with Tabby. Tabby, I'm so glad to see you. I'm not glad to see you. <gasps> Tabby, oh my goodness, that makes me feel sad. It makes me feel happy. Oh, Tabby, I'm just going to sit over here and be sad. I'm going to stand over here and be excited. Wait a minute. Every time I say, hold on. Tabby, um... I'm really tired. I'm really awake. Oh, um, Tabby, I am um, super uh, hungry. I'm very full. Okay, I see it. I think I see what's happening here. Do you get, and the kids are like, she's doing opposites. Okay, yeah, so it's opposites. Tabby, is it opposite day? No, it's not opposite day. What? It's not opposite day. What do you mean? But you're doing all the opposites of what I'm saying, like you're saying the opposites. No, but it's not opposite day. Okay, but you you but you're doing opposites. I'm really confused here. Mitch Ra okay. If I said it was opposite day, but it actually was opposite, I'd have to say the opposite of opposite day. So that makes sense. So when I say it's not opposite day, it actually means it is opposite day. Oh, so is it opposite day? No. 
which means yes. Okay, so and so then um, the kids we they think that's hilarious, um, and Tabby's like, I actually am excited to see you, and I was sorry I said that earlier, but I had to say because the opposites anyway. But I'm glad you're here. Okay, so then like so then uh, Tabby will say things. Um, and kids get to, we get to talk about opposites, different kinds of opposites. And there are a couple ways that we try this out. Sometimes I'll have Tabby say something and the kids say and show the opposite. So that's really easy if you do like, um, awake and the kids can go asleep and they can like pretend they're sleeping. Or you could do, um, uh, short and then the kids can say and show tall. Or you could do, um, you could do scrunched up together and they can do apart or whatever. You know, the kids can sort of show that um, and Tabby can say it and they can show it. Or if you want, you can have a kid say a word and Tabby can say the opposite. That's a little trickier. If you give them the prompt word like tired, they can do awake. Or if you do like um, slow, they can do fast. If you say quiet, they can do loud. But sometimes kids will give you a word that does not have an opposite. Like the other day, a girl's like cake. And I was like, the opposite of cake is not no cake. Because like, <laughs> I know that's what she was thinking. Cake and no cake. And like, while while I appreciate that, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's the opposite of cake. Because what you, you could argue the opposite of cake is like, I don't know, pancake or bread or meat. I don't know, you know, or like an appetizer. We're getting off track. Sorry. Okay. So anyway, so you bet like get kids giving uh, words is very interesting. So I let the kids give us a word and Tabby will try and come up with the opposite. Um, so anyway, <laughs> what was really fun, there's one today where um, the kid said hard and Tabby said easy. And he was like, no, the opposite of hard is soft. And I was like, but isn't, isn't like if you have a really hard game, couldn't the opposite of a hard game be an easy game? So that was another fun moment. And actually, I was being observed for this lesson. So the principal was like, vocabulary bully. <laughs> so anyway, it was it was hilarious. So we do opposites. And then um, we get into uh, long and short um, being opposites. And you can have long sounds and short sounds. And then I have kids. <clears throat> I've shared about this on many other, uh, like two or three other times, where we have these little packets that have little cut, die cut stars, and then um, popsicle sticks that are either long popsicle sticks or short popsicle sticks. And the kids are going to show me whether they, you know, I'll play a sound and they get to tell me if, if they think it's a long sound or a short sound by putting either a long stick or a short stick underneath each star. So there'll be four sounds for, for the four stars and they have to you know, decide, is it a long sound, a short sound? So some examples. The first time I give them examples of the long and short sounds, I play the egg shaker and I'll do. as a long sound and then as a short sound. Just so it's like very, very, very distinct long and, and short right and i'll do it you know so four sounds in a row i'll do four sounds on the the egg shaker so maybe i'll do a pattern like long short long short um and then we'll i'll say great you did great we'll clear off and let's move to a new instrument and i i know i've shared about this sort of process before so i'm not going to get too far into this um with the kindergartners i always go from an egg shaker to um, a very distinct, different instrument. I like to pull out the stir xylophone. Um, if you've never seen one of these before, it's super fun. It reminds me of that, like, um, a ride at a, a carnival or, like, an amusement park that where you, like, stand in basically, like, a silo that just, like, spins super fast and, like, the floor drops out. Has anyone else ever done one of those <laughs> at, like, a amusement park? Anyway... It reminds me of that because it's that sort of like circular shape, but you really, you just sort of stir um, the the uh, mallet in here. It makes this fun sound. Um, anyway, so, or you could just hold and do that if you wanted, but it's a stir xylophone. So for this one with long and short sounds, I'm, I either do one rotation or like four. So a short sound would be, and then like a long sound would be. Right, so a much longer one. So this is a super fun one, and it's like a very unique sound. The kids really love it. So when you play, they like zip it, right? Because they really want to hear it. And I, you even talk about, you could play each one. That's not very fun. It's much more fun when you stir. I actually got one of these ones that came with a spoon. It was hilarious. I love that. Um, then I'll probably do something like a ratchet. A very again a very different sound 
and, and I was like, ooh, that this one's... I always, before I play this, I'm like, I bet this one's going to surprise you. you. It's, oh, it is a funny sound. You just wait, because if you don't prime them, kids will get surprised, frightened, I don't know. Um, so that's a fun one. And then this one is, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of this. Years ago, I saw Chris Judah Louder. Okay, Chris, by the way, if you could ever go to one of Chris's workshops, you need to go. Chris is brilliant. I I did my ORF masterclass with Chris. It was, I could have done four more weeks. It was so good. Anyway, one of the things, at a workshop once, Chris pulls out a bunt pan and I'm like, what? Are you? Anyway, she's like, <laughs> she's like, I've been collecting these for years. But she took them out and played it. And it's like a portable gong. It's hilarious. Um, the She has a bunch of them because then she, like they're, they are pitched at different pitches. Um, but what I love about this is, okay, number one, gongs are so expensive. They're so expensive. And they're, and they're always like, whoosh, you know, bam, kids playing really too hard. So anyway, this is super fun because it is a really fun resident instrument. I got this for like $2 at a thrift store. Um, you just hit it with a mallet. And it's a great sound, actually, like <laughs> legitimately. Like it's a great sound. Anyway, so, um, but what's fun about this for kindergarten is trying to get them to, to differentiate between um, long and short sounds, not, and like duration of sound, not just when I hit it, because the hit takes just a fraction of a second, but the sound continues on. So when I, before we even do like an example, I say, raise your hand when you can no longer hear the sound ringing, because it's going to play for a while. So raise your hand when you can no longer hear it, and I'll play... And sometimes I'll count how long it rings. Sometimes I'll put my, my like my my personal headset microphone close to it so that it reverberates louder. Because so, you know some kids who are further away they'll lose the sound faster. So, but anyway, this is a great fun example. And oh my gosh, thanks to Chris for opening my eyes to this wonderful instrument. She said she keeps like a mallet in her purse because when she goes to thrift store, she's like, I really need, I really need a, <laughs> you know, like. A B flat or whatever. Like, is this the right pitch? Is, and anyway, this one is actually tuned, I think, at a C sharp, which is not helpful. It's <laughs> like, how am I ever going to include that in, in with ORF instruments? I'm not. Anyway, so um, it just doesn't fit in well. But it, it's a beautiful sound for something like this. Super fun with my kinders. Um, in the second lesson of the week, we do uh, Luby Lou. Here we go, Luby Lou. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Lou, all on a Saturday night. And then there's you put your right foot in, you take your right foot out, you give your foot a shake, 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 and turn yourself about. So there are the two parts, the here we go, Luby Lou, and then there's the you put your right foot in. And so the two parts of the song, super fun song. Kids love doing it, and there are some fun little actions you could do with that too. But again, we're talking opposites here. So one of the things we talk about is in and out of the circle. So you put your right foot in, you take your right foot out, and then we could also do right and left. So you could do your right foot one time, your left foot one time. We could talk about how to find the posters in the room that show right and left. So you always get right, right, and left, left. Anyway, so um, it's fun to, to do this one with kids, and it's a great a great one for opposites too because you could do um you put your hands high you put your hands low like you could totally change it if you just wanted to continue on with that idea of opposites but you can do right foot left foot right hand left hand you can do head you can do whole body it's sort of like the hokey pokey in that regard and then we do the the stars again with the assessment with long and short sounds and then also i'll do one where there will be no sound so how do you document that? So it, we haven't really talked about a rest yet, but this gives them the opportunity of like, there's a star, there should be a, something to listen for here, but I don't hear any sound on this one. So what are we going to do? Because it's a no sound star. So how are we going to show that? So it's sort of like pre, uh, pre, like prepping for talking about rests because we haven't really done that in kindergarten yet. Okay, and that's my kindergarten lessons. Woohoo! I got evaluated on one of those. My principal was in there today, so... Um, we'll see what she thinks about it. Hope she'll, hopefully she really enjoyed it because it was actually a pretty fun lesson and she got to see me being crazy with at least two puppets. So I don't know that she's ever seen me use a puppet before, which is really surprising, honestly. But anyway, so I hope she had a great time. So third grade, I want to talk a little bit about um, family folk dance night. So in at the end of March, we're going to have a family folk dance night. Um, my third graders do this thing called International Festival every year where they like research 
a country and they do like a project in their classrooms about it and usually it's synced up with like a music program or music concert and I've wanted to do a folk dance night with one of my grades I've done it before with fourth grade um, I excited to try it with third grade um, and I was like what better way to do this than you know because like at the beginning of the semester our district was like you have to do concerts again for the public we had just been doing them broadcast or simulcast whatever online um, and parents were not coming to the performances because it only happened during the school day because of COVID. So the school district was like, you're going to do them again. Cool. How are we going to do that? So part of it is we're going to do a lot of things outside or we're going to, they're all, I mean, I'm not even going to get into that, but I wanted to do more of my concerts outside. And one of the things we're going to try is out right next to my school is the high school and we can use one of their practice soccer fields and we can have a folk dance night where they can the kids can show off a couple dances and my plan for this is they'll show like two or three that are like a little bit more complex took a little bit while a little while to learn and then um we'll do a dance with parents where they're invited to come and try with us um, because it's outside and because we're going to be spaced out i don't feel um terrible about this i feel good about this and, and parents love doing this with their kids because they never get an ex they never get an experience like this where they get to do this sort of activity with their kids Unless it's like a a school dance or, you know, like a Girl Scouts or something like that or you, or church or whatever. They don't get that chance to like do this sort of a thing with their kids. And so then we get to learn and have fun together. And this is fun because the kids will know the dance and they'll be like, no, mom, you got to, you know, whatever. Where is the do -si do Come on, don't you know? Do -si so it's going to be fun where the kids get to sort of demo some of these things for their parents. Um, and then pull their parents in to the process of doing it. As I was choosing songs, um, I have a whole list of like, um, you know, again, I was trying to fit with that theme of like international festivals. So I was trying to find songs from different places around the world, um, authentic folk dances, or just things that have sprung out of different countries to try and, and get a good variety. I also wanted to get a variety of circle dance, line dance, square dance, uh, long way set, you know, like just a, a couple different things, maybe something without, um, without like a set form, like a line or a circle or whatever to have something that's a little bit more free form. So as I was going through, basically what I did was I took all of my, well, a lot of my folk dance books. So this one I know I've talked about before, Teaching Movement and Dance by Phyllis Weikert. Really, really, really great book. So many examples, right? So I just went through and every time, again, I'm trying to get different countries and I'm trying to get different styles. So as I went through, I just, you can see, I just tabbed, maybe you can't see, I just tabbed a bunch. And this is actually after I took some of the tabs off. And on the tab, I put like, um, from France, super easy circle. Or I put like, uh, line dance, um, South Africa, uh, I don't know what that other thing I wrote one was. Um, oh, four four directions, so you get a move. So it's this is one that I went through and pulled a bunch of things from. I also looked at all the resources from the New England Dancing Masters. These are great, but they they trend more American or English or British or whatever. They I mean they're they tend to not be as multicultural world um representation just because they're sort of more traditional mainline folk dance but there are quite a few great examples in here so i went through all of these um and found different things that i really liked and so then every week i'm introducing another one or we're sort of um dovetailing off of one that we've done before to introduce a new one so my plan is like there are a lot of dances i've never taught before um which is a little bit scary because you know going into the thing where i want to share it with parents um, I want to have something that I know is going to work. But um, what I found is that like the more I do these, the better I get at them and the more fun we have and the more, if kids already know some of the language, it's not so hard to introduce a new dance. So if, if they've already done a, a dance in a long way set, they get how that works. If they've already done a circle one, they get how that works. If they've already done a do -si do they can apply that to a new dance and it's not as tricky. So um, what we're working on in the last couple of weeks, we did, um, I shared about one called Balelu, which is from France. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but the pronunciation of the book is weird. Anyway, um, Balelu Gambol, I think, is what I was pronounced. That's from the Phyllis Weikert book. We just did the Gallipede, uh, 
uh, which is maybe from the... No, I think that's from the one of the New England Dancing Masters. We just learned one from Poland called the Jurjuka Kolo. I got to obviously figure out the pronunciations of all of these before <laughs> we share them with the parents. Um, so that was a circle dance, a, line, a long way set in a circle dance. And then... Um, we're going to learn the Pata Pata, which is from South Africa. And that is sort of more of a line dance where you get to like turn on at the end of your movement and then do, do it in four different directions. Um, so again, trying to get good representation from songs from around the world or from different places, it's tricky. Um, and part of that depends on the resources you have available. And part of it is depends on the, the, the ability level for the kids. Cause again, like some of these, sometimes I found dances in, in the Phyllis Weikert book that were like, oh, wow, cool for my fifth graders to do, you know, or, so it's like trying to find a good balance of like, is it grade level appropriate? Does it represent a different culture? Um, can we learn it in time? So there are a lot of those considerations as we go, but it's been a super, super fun uh, process and the kids are having a good time with the content so far. Um, my plan is, uh, again, like I said, I'm going to have a couple songs that are like demo song or like we do it for parents. It's more of like a performance. Like we did this and it's tricky and we're going to show you. And then um, we're going to split off and actually because there's whole international festivals, like part of it is that kids are... Um, putting together projects about their the country that they chose to research. Um, half the kids are going to go inside and show their parents like their research project set up in the gym um, for about 20 minutes. While they're doing that, I'm going to take the other two homerooms and we're going to do, uh, they're going to pull their parents onto the field and we're going to dance with them. And it's going to be nice. Got the whole soccer field we can spread out. So it'll be really great. And then after about 20 minutes, we'll switch. So the whole process will be about an hour. There'll be 10, 15 minutes of us at the beginning showing the parents and then some parents will leave and we'll do our dances with one you know one set of homerooms and then we'll switch and i'll do that same exact set of dances with the new homerooms while the other ones go and do the research project so i think it'll be a fun time for everybody um it's going to be my first time doing one of these in a long time but it's it's very participatory and when parents are like we didn't have anything to you know see our kids do a music program well guess what not only are you going to like see some things, you're going to be involved as well. So bring your dance and shoes. <laughs> anyway, um, it's super fun. If you've never done a folk dance night, you should check it out. You should try it. I've done one before. Um, it was surprisingly fun and stress. I'm not going to say stress free. I'm going to say like diet stress. Like it was like a diet Coke of stress. It was like not too super frustrating, but it was, it was fun worth it like a diet coke anyway we've reached our time <laughs> um i hope you had a great time tonight i'm gonna be back again next week with more ideas and more lesson plans again as always if you have questions or thoughts please leave a comment um or shoot me an email make moments at gmail.com if you leave a comment i'll try and come back and catch it and comment back if, if it's a question um, or you can always join our Facebook group, which is Every Moment Matters Music Education Community, um, and hopefully get more reinforcement and questions and, and things answered there. But if nothing else, I hope I'll see you again next week. Have a great week, everyone.